Hello everyone, this is Bradley. Today we're going to talk about uh, basics of basics within the newest geometry nodes. A node that I find many people are asking questions about, which is geometry proximity node. Uh, we're going through all the functionalities uh, that a geometry proximity node are designed for. So let's just start. So here we in Blender and I have a plane and a sphere. On the plane, I have a geometry nodes modifier. Within the node tree, I have a subdivide mesh. To subdivide this plane and a set position node, which is essentially doing nothing here. The position generally means the vertices locations of our mesh. And note that in this position socket, there is an automatic linkage with the position attribute. So that even if you do not link this position to the position, the geometry will stay at the same place. However, you will lose this kind of automatic linkage once you input other values, for example, combine x, y, z. Once you plug this combined vector node and you put a vector into the position, immediately you will lose all your geometry or your mesh because all the vertices will come into the position that you assign, which is called 0, 0, 0. So norm, uh, in the old days, when we do not have these offset buttons, what you need to do is to take a vector mass to add up your any kind of vector with the original position attributes and then put back this position to the place. So now you have the, all your mesh back and you can transform your vertices up and down or left and right based on whatever vector you generated. it. Also notice that you can randomize the whole mesh just using the random values or random vectors and then all the vertices will just be crazy. So this is maybe a way that you would like to make a terrain or other things. Also notice that you can take just a kind of noise texture node to do whatever stuff. Okay. However, with the new update, there is an offset node. Uh, there is an offset socket that even if you do not uh, input the original positions, as long as you turn on this offset, it will automatically add these two nodes internally within this node. So you no longer need to keep this uh, vector mass and the position attributes as a part of your node tree, but simply just to turn on and turn off this offset, then you can actually deform your mesh with a single combined XYZ node or whatever other nodes. This is very important to think about this uh, automatic uh, inputs of position because when we're talking about a geometry proximity node, which is the main topic today, we will have the same issues with this source of position. The geometry proximity node can basically achieve two kinds of function, each done by its output socket. So the first function it can achieve with its position output socket is to resembling an effect of shrink wrap modifier. So for shrink wrap modifier, we can find that into the deform section, and uh, we can select the target as a UE sphere, and immediately you can see the effect that we wrapped a plane on the top surface of the sphere. And definitely you can change different modes so that you can do different kind of functions, but uh, that's not the topic today. I just want to say that uh, you can change the offset or vertex group to make the animation. Essentially, this modifier, it can be used to either model or animate to a surface which is hard to, hard to achieve by non-procedural ways, like a gun or a sofa or other things. Okay, so we are going to replicate the same effect with geometry proximity node here. So let's do it. So as we mentioned previously, uh, it's a kind of a shrink wrap modifier. So the target is essentially the sphere. We need to pull the target using the object info nodes. And let's select this sphere, put the geometry into the target. And as I mentioned before about the position, automatic linkage for the position to position sockets, it's the same rule applying to the source position as well. So in this case, we directly plug this position into position and you can see some effect, but it's not the same as the shrink wrap modifier. It's simply because the location difference between this our plane and the UV sphere, in this case, you just change the original to relative. You can see this 100% the same effect with the shrink wrap modifier. 
Here, I want you to notice that we're using a face mode so that we're comparing our geometry to the face of our sphere geometry. But uh, I think most commonly we're using the points as a way for evaluation so that the vertices goes to vertices and so on and so forth. But you can definitely play around the different modes to see which one fits you better. But uh, as I just uh, want to say that I think uh, especially for the distance output, which is doing a completely different function that we will discuss later, we commonly use points mode to evaluate. Okay, And I also want to remind you that this entire function does not really stop here. It can do a lot of more things depends on your imagination. So we're going to explore just a little bit with what we can essentially do with this node system. To make a kind of morphing animation, we always uh, we can always use kind of mix RGB. And you might be worrying that I plug the purple socket into yellow socket. This is simply because the purple, which, uh, which means vector, which is also called XYZ in Blender, uh, is essentially the same as the color, which is just the three floats being named in terms of RGB. So X can be R, Y can be G, Z can be B. So they are interconvertible. So for mix, it does not only mix RGB, it can also mix vector. So there is no problem to plug the purple into yellow. There are definitely limitations with this node I've discussed in other videos. That's why I made my own mix vector nodes. I just named that mix X, Y, Z. But this is not the topic today, so I'm just going to disregard that. So in this case, I'm going to pedagog the position into the color too. And you can see immediately there is a kind of interesting effect being going on. And by playing this factor, so in the factor one, we have a plane. And in the factor zero, we wrap the plane onto a sphere. So in this case, just imagine that this is this sphere is a sofa, and this plane may be a cross. So we just wrap the cross onto a sofa. So this is kind of a fake cross animation kind of stuff that you can think about. So you essentially have kind of more controls with just the modifier. DC effect, however, just does not end here yet because you can even put multiple value within this factor. For example, I created a kind of directional fold. The fold also means kind of a masking. So in this case, I'm going to plug the position into vector as a way of evaluation. And I'm going to use the control as a way to just uh, control the fold. This controller is essentially just an empty. And I'm going to plug this fold into the factor. And immediately you can see kind of the effect that I create a kind of differentiation of how this plane is being wrapped into sphere. So there are parts that the plane has been wrapped into sphere. There are parts the plane is not wrapped onto sphere. So this differentiation it can it can be also a part of animation. Depends on what you would like to do. Uh, I understand that this may be just a kind of ugly example, but I hope you get a kind of idea how things actually works in this kind of case. And uh, let's just scale it up a little bit. Okay. So this is roughly about what I can talk about in uh, about this position outputs in terms of shrink mo uh, shrink wrap modifier. Next thing we're going to discuss this distance, which many people ask about how to use about that. So here, let's just start with a new setup, which is essentially the same as we had previously. We have a plane and I subdivide the mesh and I set the position, which is essentially doing nothing here at this moment. And our goal is to deform this mesh based on its position, uh, its, uh, the vertices distance relative to the empty so that we are going to use this geometry proximity node. Okay. Uh, instead of using the uh, empty, I will firstly use a single vertices which is created by this mesh line. So if I take the count into one, then it's a single vertices whose de points is defined by this start location. If I plug the geometry into targets and then plug this distance into position and turn on this offset, so that we add the original position onto the top of our deformation. Then you can see there is a deformation of our plane, which is in a very weird direction. The reason is that this gray socket means a float. And if you combine XYZ, then you can see 
Once you put a, a float into a purple socket or a yellow socket, which means color, then it will fill all three channels. So for example, if I have float of one, then it will fill this combined XYZ as one, one, one. That's why everything goes just in the positive direction in such kind of weird way. In this case, I'm going to plug only distance to Z and the vector back to position so that it only elevates the points based on the distance. Okay. I also do not like uh, this kind of elevation. I want to reverse the elevation. So here I'm going to plug a map range and I'm going to reverse the relationship between minimum and maximum and by just the playing around with this minimum value I can actually change how high this tip is. So now let's try with this empty and as soon as we put these empties into the target you realize um, it does not really work very well. The reason is that empty is not a mesh. It's, uh, it has no points, no edges, no faces. So nothing can be evaluated. So the distance being input, uh, being output is essentially zero. So if you take the, if you input the zero, then it will be remapped into 3.5, which determines the elevation of our geometry. So in this case, it does not work. There are multiple kinds of workaround. For example, you can vector mask that and uh, you can use the position as a way of the evaluation of the change the type in the distance, put the position in, put the location in, put the distance outputs into the value and you have our effect. But this may just be kind of chaotic. However, it just uh, helps not very well with the geometry proximity as well because what you need to do is still you need a single vertices and plug the geometry into the target and plug the distance into value. Then you do kind of effect. But at the end, whichever method that you choose takes essentially about two nodes and uh, this is kind of it. Okay. Note that I've created a, uh, a basically kind of a presets which is essentially kind of doing this kind of job along with many other controls. It's basically just called a proximity fourth and it's essentially you can see how similar the setup is i have target source position i have target and source position uh, what do you need to do in this case you just uh, put the position into the source position and target into actually i'm not using target i'm using object so let's select the empties plug the fourth into place and immediately you have this kind of effect you don't even need a map range because I already mapped everything for you. Okay, so this is kind of idea. One thing I want to remind you is that uh, this geometry proc, although we are using a single vertices or an empty as a, an example, but it can really work with various kind of geometry. For example, I have a UV sphere, and then I put a UV sphere as the target, and evaluate with the points, plug the distance into the map range then i have this kind of very weird whatever stuff so you can really play around with this kind of geometry proximity there are many potential ways uh, it's a function also we are working with the deformation currently but we can also working with the instances which also many people asked essentially the principle are 100 percent the same so we're going to just try a little bit. So here, let's change our setup. Instead of doing the deformation, I'm going to do the instances. So let's put a point instance. And let's uh, just the UV, uh, use a UV sphere. I'm going to take down the instances and take the radius down. So I have a group of sphere. Let's delete the original UV sphere. And I'm going to control their size based on the location of our empty. Let's make this empty a little bit more clear with the UV sphere. So we can move this empty and see, yes. Next thing is basically just uh, the same as uh, we are doing previously. Putting the controller locations into the starting location of mesh line and plug it into the geometries. And finally, well, I'm not going to use XYZ plug everything into scale. The immediately you can see only uh, the, the
the closer is the distance, the larger the scale of our UV sphere. And you can play around all this kind of parameter so that you can see how it actually works. But you also realize the the effect that does not the effect it does not enlarge with the scale of our controller. In this case, you probably would like to link the scale of our controller with the maximum so that you can affect many part of stuff. So this kind of this kind of four nodes are basically part of my preset, uh, along with many other functions. So that's why I made that preset so that I do not want to deal with all these kind of four nodes for every kind of operation. Instead, I directly use this proximity fourth node, plug the positions, select the objects, plug the fourth into scale, then immediately I have all the effect I want and I can manipulate how things being changed. So you can actually create a lot of, kind of interesting effects just with this kind of fourth node. So this is actually almost all about it. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'll probably see you next time. Bye-bye.